So what exactly is an epoxidation reaction? What is the mechanism of epoxidation and what are some applications? So let's begin by defining what epoxidation is and what it allows us to achieve. So epoxidation allows us to create three membered rings containing oxygen atoms. And these are known as epoxides, also known as oxirins. So in our epoxidation reaction, our reactants are alkenes and per acids. So in this case, we have a four carbon alkene. So specifically, we have a trans alkene and we have some per acid. Now a per acid simply has one more oxygen atom than a normal organic acid. So this is our general formula of our per acid. So we have the carbonyl group, the carbon double bonded to the oxygen. On one side we have the alkyl hydrocarbon, on the other side we have the two oxygens attached in a row and attached to the H. Now this oxygen, as we'll see in just a moment, becomes important in our epoxide formation. So, before we actually discuss what the mechanism of our epoxidation reaction is, let's discuss what the mechanism can be. Now, before scientists came up with the mechanism, they, will, they were able to see from experimental results that two things cannot take place in this epoxidation reaction. Now, firstly, no rearrangement of any kind take place. And secondly, the stereochemistry of our alkene is retained. So that basically means that if we begin with a trans alkene, we must end up with a trans epoxide. Likewise, if we begin with a cis alkene, we must end up with a cis epoxide. So this means that whatever the mechanism is, we cannot have a carbocation intermediate. Why? Well, because carbocation intermediates lead to two things. They lead to either rearrangements or they lead to our stereochemistry difference. In other words, if we have a carbocation intermediate, there can be a rotation of the carbon-carbon bond and this rotation will lead to both cis as well as trans isomers. And because from experimental results we know that we do not form both types of uh, isomers, we only form one of the isomers, that means we cannot have a carbocation intermediate. So what exactly is our mechanism of epoxidation reaction? Well, the mechanism looks like this. It's relatively complicated because a lot is going on. So first notice that the alkene, the pi bond of our double bond is acting as a nucleophile attacking this oxygen, displacing this pair of electrons, this bond here. At the same time, this bond attacks this carbon, forms a double bond between this oxygen and carbon, and at the same time, this double bond, this pi bond breaks, and it attacks this and the H atom, taking it away. And finally, this bond between this H atom and oxygen attacks this carbon, and we form the following epoxide. So once again, this epoxide is a three-membered ring that contains an oxygen atom and two carbon atoms. Notice that this ring is neutral, and that means that we will be able to isolate this molecule under certain conditions. So the mechanism of our epoxidation reaction is a one-step syn addition. It's concerted and that basically means that we do not have a carbocation intermediate. This is not a stepwise mechanism. It's a one-step mechanism that takes place in one step when the alkene orients itself appropriately with this per acid. Now, once again, this R group is simply an alkyl group. It can be any hydrocarbon group. So what exactly are some applications of epoxidation reaction? What's the intention of producing this cyclic intermediate? Well, this cyclic intermediate can allow us, can allow us to produce alcohol compounds. In other words, we can have alcohol formation from these epoxides. So two important ways must be discussed. We must look 
and epoxides mixing with bases and, and epoxides mixing with acids. So let's begin epoxide and bases. So whenever we form an epoxide and we add H2O and a base, such as hydroxide, that base can act as a nucleophile in an SN2 reaction. Recall that in an SN2 reaction, our nucleophile wants to attack backside via a backside approach and it also wants to attack at the less sterically hindered side. So if we have the following asymmetrical epoxide, this nucleophile will attack from the less sterically hindered side from this side to this carbon because these two H groups are smaller than these two R alkyl groups. So this lone pair of electrons will attack this carbon displacing this bond and our intermediate will look like this. This intermediate will have a negative charge on the oxygen so our ring has now opened up. Now, at the final step, the water molecule, the solvent molecule, will come very close to this negatively charged oxygen. This oxygen will take away the H, reforming our base as well as our alcohol. So once again, the nucleophile attaches to the less substituted side because this is an SN2 reaction. So now let's look at epoxides mixing with acids. Let's suppose we have a small amount of acid, such as hydronium, mixed in a solvent such as water. Well, what takes place now? Well, now we no longer have a very good nucleophile. Instead of having hydroxide, we have water. And water will not be prone to a nucleophilic attack. It will not act as a nucleophile because this is not a very good leaving group. So before the water can act as a nucleophile, the hydronium must protonate this oxygen. So in the first step, we have the protonation step taking place. And now our intermediate has a positive charge on the oxygen. And now this becomes a much better leaving group. And now water can use its pair of electrons to attack the carbon in an SN2 fashion. But the question is, will the water attack from the less substituted side or the more substituted side? The, question, the answer is the more substituted side. Why is that? Well, the answer lies in our transition state between this intermediate and the next intermediate. In the transition state, if the nucleophile attacks from the more substituted side, there will be a partial charge on the more substituted tertiary carbocation, and that means that this will be favored, this type of reaction, attack of the more substituted side in acid will be favored. So this will be our intermediate form with a positive charge on the oxygen. And finally, now another water molecule can take away this H atom forming our final alcohol. So once again, some applications of our epoxidation reactions include the formation of alcohols, of 1,2 alcohols. Now whenever we have bases mixed with epoxides, we're going to have the base act as a nucleophile attacking the less substituted side. But in acids, the first step is the protonation step, and in the second step, our nucleophile will attack the more sterically hindered side because that side will stabilize your transition state, the partial positive charge on the carbon in the transition state. So this is a very important difference between bases and acids and mixing bases and acids with epoxides.